This is a problem that I came across a couple of years ago, uh, which involves moving a ladder from a corridor that's, that's three meters wide, trying to get it around the corner into another corridor two meters wide. Now, we're trying to find the longest ladder that we can get around this corner, which means the problem for us is to find the shortest distance from P to Q, because the shortest distance, you see if it's way over here, it's quite long. Same thing down here. So the shortest distance for PQ will be the longest ladder that we could get around the corner. So actually it's a minimum problem. Now, what I've done is I've taken the ladder, broken it into two parts, length one and length two, and since in, in uh, solving a, a max-min problem, you want a single variable. And the best variable to work with here is this angle that I marked with theta. Uh, this is the, what, what are called corresponding angles, parallel lines. Um, so these two angles are, are equal. So here's the width of this corridor. Here's the width of this one. Um, the sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse. Um, I rearranged it. I call this a cross trade. What we're really doing is multiplying both sides by L1 and dividing both sides by sine theta. But you can just trade places with these two variables. And down here we've got the cos of theta adjacent over hypotenuse. Same thing and did a trade as well. So that means the length of the ladder, which is the sum of L1 and L2, can be written in terms of one variable, and that's the angle here. Now, in order to take the derivative of this, I didn't want to use the uh, quotient rule, so I rewrote this as sine to the negative 1. Now you've got to be careful when you do this. If I put the negative 1 on the word sine, it would look like an inverse sine. This is one area of mathematics where the, uh, the symbolism is a little bit confusing. Uh, putting the minus 1 there indicates that it's 1 over sine theta rather than an inverse. Now, if you've never done trig um, calculus in trigonometry before, uh, the only thing you have to know here is first of all we're doing the chain rule negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 that lowers to negative 2 times the derivative of what's inside so the new thing here if you're new to uh, uh, taking derivatives of sine and cos the derivative of sine is cos and over here I'm doing exactly the same thing it's the uh, chain rule but the derivative of cos is the negative of sine and I cleaned that up a little bit. I wrote the, uh, the sine to the negative 2 on the bottom with sine squared. I had a couple of negatives here, so I put plus and again moved the cos to the bottom. And the rest of this is just a matter of cleaning this up. I put the derivative equal to 0, moved this term to the left side, cross-multiplied. That's why I ended up with cos cubed and sine cubed. Um, divided both sides by 2 and by cos cubed. Basically it's just the reverse of cross multiplying brought the cos cubed down and the 2 down on the other side. There are lots of things that you can do with fractions on both sides of an equation. Lots of little shortcuts that you can use there. Now fortunately these are both cubed. So I can replace sine cubed over cos cubed with tan cubed. Took the cube root, got tan theta, then took the inverse of tan theta, got my angle, and then all I had to do was go back to my original length formula. This is the L1 plus L2. It was 3 over sine theta and 2 over cos theta. Evaluated that and we've got the shortest distance for PQ, which is then the longest ladder that we could get around the corner.